In this part of the .NET MAUI Crash Course, we're going to see how to display data in a collection view. If you are following this course part by part, then this might get boring, but I just want to point out for all the other people that if you've landed here and not followed the entire course, then this video is part of a course. So make sure I would highly recommend that you start this course from the start and follow it all the way through in order because that will make the most sense. I'm referring to other videos left and right, so make sure to do that. In this video before, I explained everything about the single project approach in .NET MAUI. Before that, we've set up the um, dev environment that you will need for .NET MAUI. And in this video, we're actually going to get some doing some code and I'm going to show you how to show data in a collection view in your .NET MAUI app, which is a big part of any mobile app, basically. Now, without any further ado, let's just dive straight in here. Um, I first pulled up the repository. I already mentioned the repository for the workshop. Um, so I forked it from the original one. You can see that here just so I have, you know, a, a, a control over um, what is going on here. And I don't show you all these kinds of weird things that are suddenly updated in the uh, original repository. Um, but you can see here, it consists of multiple parts. So I did the overview. I stretched the overview in a couple of more videos, um, but right now we're kind of like at part one displaying data and you can see all the parts here so whenever you're going through this the, the one part is going to be one video um, and whenever you go through here you can click it and you can also follow along here with all the readmes each part will have a readme and you can see exactly what we're doing here so uh, whenever i skip over something which i'm not going to do i'm going to be amazing but you can kind of like reread review here what is going on um, and a little bit of background information and some links left and right so don't worry about what's here Right now, I'm going to totally show you. And each folder, um, each part will also have its own set of source. So here you can see the monkey finder um, and it has blank files. But whenever you get stuck or whenever you think like, hey, I'm going to start here from the MVVM part or you're wondering like, hey, what should be the end state? Then you can peek in like the next part because the end of part one, what we're going to build is going to be the start of part two, right? So all the code should follow up like that and you can just easily pick up from the next part or have a little peek there um, what is going on. So I'm going to assume that you know how to get the code from this GitHub repository. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but here in this green button, you have code, you have all these options. Um, I like the GitHub desktop client, so you can just click open with GitHub desktop client, clone the thing with your GitHub account, and you will have it on your disk. Or you can just say download zip, um, you will get the whole thing in a zip package, put that on your file system and unzip it. Um, you should end up with a folder like like this and here you will see the part one displaying data with all the things and all the other parts and just open this monkey finder solution and you will end up with Visual Studio like this. Um, here we can see the main page, which is totally empty from a file um, new .NET MAUI application. So uh, we can see here actually on the right in the solution explorer that we've added a couple of things. Um, so you can see views and view models and, and models here. Um, so there's a couple of extra things. Whenever we hit something, I will go over them. Um, but those files are mostly going to be empty and placeholder so we don't have to repeat all the things and and add all the files here constantly so this is where we're at one thing i want to point out here is this global usings which is also a um, c sharp 10.net 6 feature um, where you can just have one file uh, where you say global using and then the the, the the namespace so you don't you don't have to repeat over and over again all the namespaces in all of the files so this is a very cool new feature just put all your usings in one um in one file and it will pick up on that throughout your whole project. So that's that's what's going on here. Now for the rest, we have this main page.xaml. We'll focus on that in a little bit. But before we're going to display the data, we actually need a model for the data that we're going to display, right? So we can use the different properties um, that we're going to display in that collection view. So in this model folder right here, uh, we have a monkey because we're going to show a list of monkeys with some details um, that come together with a monkey. Now, we're going to get this from a JSON file, um, which is a file that is supplied locally with this project. But we're also going to see how to get it from the internet from, from a remote source, which is very typical for a app scenario, right? Um, and what is really cool, we have it here in under the resources, obviously, and the raw folder. Um, and then we have this monkey data.json. I can open it here, and this will be a JSON file. It's actually formatted so you can uh, read it nicely. Um, and it has all these properties. 
properties, right? Name, location, details, all these things that we can show and use for different scenarios. Um, so you can go to solutions like uh, QuickType, I think, and, and JSON to C Sharp um, to generate the classes for us, but actually it is built in to Visual Studio. So if we just Control A and Control C, if we copy this and we go to our monkey CS and I go here inside of this public class and we can go to edit and say paste special and I can say paste JSON as classes. So if we do that, well, it's actually going to replace this, this root object here. Um, so in this case, it, it kind of like goes wrong maybe, but um, because it's an it's a collection, right? So it's trying to create this object for the collection of things. And this class one is actually our monkey object. So we don't need the collection for this thing. Um, maybe it would have been better. Actually, let me just show you. I can just delete this thing again, um, go here, and then let's just take one monkey. We just want to have this one object, right? So this is the representation of one object. Let's copy this one, uh, go to our monkey CS and actually edit. Uh, paste special, paste JSON as classes, and now it's going to do our root object with all the properties that we can kind of see, here, right? So um, we still need that, don't need that public class here. So let's remove that one and boom, now we suddenly have our monkey object without having to type a whole bunch of things, right? We just have this here. Let's see if we can format this a little bit nicer for the indentation here we are so we have this monkey object now what is a good thing to kind of like note is that it doesn't maybe infer all the types correctly so here it's a public float i think if you want to kind of like do this gps coordinates it's better to do that with a double so let's make sure that this is a double and we get everything correctly here uh, maybe it doesn't really matter but double check the data that's coming in here that it makes sense for the data types that you actually want to do but right now this should be easy to serialize and deserialize between these two. Now with this in place, actually it's time to go over to our main page.xaml and implement our collection view. Now the collection view is something that kind of like takes up the whole screen um, because you know typically a list is shown as, as part of the whole screen. You can definitely you know downsize that and, and make it an element but in this case we want to show it as a full screen. So inside of our content page I can just say collection view and Boom, there we are, we have a collection view. Now, obviously it's not as easy as this. Um, so we want to do kind of like, we want to feed it with items, right? And you can do that with the collection view dot um, items source. And here we can feed it with items. You can do that um, inside of this XAML right here. But the more typical scenario, of course, would be to do that from code or even better through data binding through MVVM. You just provide that data to a, a property and the collection view will automatically pick up the data that's coming in and show it nicely. For now, to get started, just to get you the, the hang of uh, the collection view, I'm going to do this in XAML and, and show you how this actually shows up. Later on, we will transform this code and, and make it a little bit more nicer and get the data data elsewhere. Um, but for now, we are going to set this data source. And actually, let me just paste a little bit of XAML here so you don't have to see me type uh, uh, all the things here. So what we're actually going to do is put in here an array. So this is the representation of a XAML array um, of the type monkey. So this, this refers to our monkey um, uh, model that we have right here. And for each of these, we're going to create monkeys. And um, this will just add one thing to our array. So this is one record, two record, three record. So we copy and pasted a little bit here from um, the, the JSON file that we already have. Just like I said, this is just some static data to, to kind of like get the point across. Um, you can see the model.monkey is not recognized here uh, because we need to add a XML namespace. And an XML namespace is kind of like a shorthand notation for not having to type um, the whole namespace and, and model and, and uh, type name and whatnot. So we can say XML and as monkey, so that monkey is kind of like our short name. And then here um, we should say um, CLR namespace. So we refer to uh, the code. And here we can say um, monkey finder dot model, right? Uh, so it will refer to our um, namespace like this and suddenly we can, oh, I, this shouldn't be monkey, but model. So um, here we have this model and this is now short for basically typing this all the time. So that makes our XAML a little less verbose. So you can see here, this is actually model.monkey. So written out loud, it would be monkeyfinder.model.monkey, right? But we can shorthand that to this and you can see that the IntelliSense now picks this up and it then also automatically knows about all the, 
properties in here, right? So we can now say the details and the images and the latitude and the longitude. Um, so it can suddenly understand what kind of model we're um, actually expecting here. So we have this array. This is our item source. Um, this is going to be the data that we're actually going to see whenever we run this like one, two, three monkeys, right? So we have three in here. Um, and actually I can just run this. So if I click here, this Windows machine, um, I will maybe switch to Windows, switch to Android, show you both in, in other videos because that's the power of .NET MAUI, right? We can just switch to another platform and uh, run it on that. And here we see our Windows application and we can see our collection view with one, two, three monkeys. But this is not really what we want to see, right? Um, this just calls the two string on our monkey model, uh, which prints out like the, the full namespace and the actual type of uh, the name of our model of our object. Um, so this is this is nice. We can see that it has picked up on the item source, but um, this is not really nice for the user, right? So let's see how we can make that better. Um, of course, if you're doing an array of simply strings, then you can totally do this. It will print out the strings. It will do the simple types. You can absolutely do that. Um, but for more complex types, you want to maybe show it a little bit in a nicer way. So we have this item source now right here. Um, Let's go to the item template. So we also have the collection view dot item template. And with this, we can provide a template and the template is applied to each of these monkeys. So in this case, three times basically. Um, and what we can do is um, we can make a complete full complex layout here, which will be used for each record in the collection view. And that will show up nicely for each of the monkeys. So um, we first have to specify a data template. Each of these has to be a data template. And um, we can actually specify here again, like the X data type um, is a model monkey so that it knows, uh, the IntelliSense knows, this is just a little helper, so that the IntelliSense knows how to help us, which properties are there for the monkey. So be aware, if you're inside of this item template, we're suddenly dealing with one monkey. Um, whereas here, with this item source, like for the collection view, um, the, the kind of like the whole backing thing is this collection. We'll get to that in, in the MVVM part, which is the next video, so don't worry about it too much. Um, but just remember that I said this basically. So we have this data template and actually again let me just copy in here a little thing so you don't have to watch me type all of this um I will go over this line by line. You can see this horizontal stack layout. So what we expect to see is um, something laid out horizontally, right? Uh, with a little bit of a padding here. Uh, we're going to show an image, which is going to be the image of our monkey. And you can see here, this already does a little thing with data binding. And remember, we're looking at one monkey model here. So we have this image and probably when I remove this and go here, I can actually see the image show up um, because we um, set this data type here. The IntelliSense will know that we're looking at a monkey model here and it can help us with the IntelliSense and all the properties that are available inside of that monkey. Now we have this image and then next we have a label and because we're inside of a horizontal stack layout, um, it will automatically know to place that image and that label next to each other. So that's kind of like what we're expecting to see, right? And inside of this label, we have a multi-binding. Now this is a more of a advanced thing um, where we can have multiple properties binding inside of the same um, text in the same label dot text in this case. A little bit more advanced, go find the description uh, and find the documentation link for this. Um, typically, you would just have one binding like this and you would set the, the image. So in this case, the URL that's in here um, to the source of this image. And in this case, we're going to use the label.txt. We're using this multi-binding, uh, which with a string format, and we have a zero, and then this pipe sign, and then one, um, and then two bindings here. So what's going to happen is it's going to get this name and location properties from the monkey right here. So name and location. And it's going to uh, format this like zero at pipe one. So what we expect to see is name, pipe sign, one, uh, location. Uh, that's what we're going to see for all the monkeys. So now we have this collection view item template set up. And this item template is again going to be um, supplied for all the items in here. So if I run this again on Windows, we get the Windows app again. And instead of getting the two string for all of our monkeys, what we will now see is actually the image for our monkey and the name and location location, um, voila, with the way that we formatted it, right? So this is basically the basics of how to display data through a collection view in your .NET MAUI application. Now that wasn't too bad, was it? You actually learned how to use the collection view. You know what data templates are? 
you know what a little bit about what binding is what a multi binding is actually multi binding i think most of the exam informs people don't even know so you already learned a thing or two now from here we're going to expand on this um first we're going to look at some mvvm stuff so we get a more thorough understanding of data binding um, i notify property changed all that kind of hard stuff uh, so we're going to see that in the next video and from there we're going to build out this application to actually get the json file deserialize that show that in a collection view, do all kinds of crazy stuff. So make sure to stick around. Actually, um, here is the next video for you where we're going to talk about MVVM. Here is the playlist for the full crash course. And here is the button that you should click no matter what. That's the subscribe button. See you on the other side.